Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back with another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Maple, um, no, Monday, April 23rd. We've got a couple of daily quests. We got one of them done. I wanted to reboot just to see if I could hit the refresh button, but I guess not. So we're trying to get Rogue and Victor uh, and Warrior victories. Once we get two more, we'll be done with the Asian account. We can move on. Tons and tons of news uh, to cover. Also, I keep forgetting, but I'm supposed to be asking people to subscribe and click that notification bell. Go back and check to see if you're actually subscribed. I mean, <laughs> YouTube is so stupid <laughs> about its subscription things. It magically unsubscribes people. It, it doesn't show notifications. Uh, Ideally, there needs to be a website that takes your subscriptions immediately away from YouTube and puts them in some place safe. Like, you subscribe to a channel and then you go to mytube.com or something. Let's just say that's the fake name of the website. I'm sure that's probably a real website, probably a porno website. Um, that... Um, but you, as soon as you subscribe to your channel, those subscriptions get held and kept and you actually get notifications. Like you don't even have to do the hosting in that case. And I've heard stories like Philip DeFranco apparently is talking about this of entire channels not being viewable, like <laughs> entire videos not being viewable, that the only way you're guaranteed to see some people's content is to follow them on Twitter, click the link from the Twitter announcement. Uh, that's kind of, it's just really dumb. Uh, let's see. Speaking of really dumb, I'm looking at a, a first game that came on Steam April 21st. It's called Baby Game Plan 0-3. Zero 0-3 to three. Zero to three is old, years old is the fastest growing phases of human beings which is important for challenge. We developed a game by absorbing the scientific research results of the current developmental psychology, multiple intelligence, and games of early education for babies. This is one of these Chinese games that looks like it is just throwing spaghetti at the wall. Like, the thing about Chinese companies, and it, they're, whether they're making a product, giving you a service, or, or making a video game, is there's like no real regulation or or like morality to it it's it's often they're they're all kind of just scams <laughs> i mean i guess uh it, it's it's poor quality stuff a lot of times and that's exactly what I'm seeing here is a poor quality like mobile game that is putting up pictures in Chinese and English of well like this is here's, here's a great example on this uh, it's a picture of two seals and one of the baby seals looks as if it is kissing the other seal and they're laying in snow uh, so below at the bottom it has in simplified chinese i assume the word kiss and in english uh roman characters uh it has the english word for kiss uh, the problem with that is if you're a baby looking at that how do you know that wasn't the word for seal or lay or snow the next screenshot is supposed to be five fingers, uh, the number five, then fingers. It's showing a probably stolen stock image of a hand that goes one, two, three. And the first three fingers on the hand are, are shown uh, numbered, but the fourth and fifth aren't. So how do you know that doesn't mean three? <laughs> like, it's, it's BS. Says this early access is three dollars and ninety nine cents. You'd be a fool to try to teach a kid based on a Steam game 
in the first place there probably should be a cell phone game if you're gonna try to try to teach babies that but uh, some knockoff brand Jap uh, Chinese thing is not what you want and we see a lot of these knockoff poor quality Chinese games uh, this is the kind of quality that should be curated off steam and it's not particularly because it's steam it's because it's uh because it's chinese it's because it's bad quality it's just bad quality like you could certainly have a game like that made from any kind con any country in the world or any type of person in the world and for the exact same reasons it should be disallowed to be on steam particularly when it's pretending or selling itself as an educational tool next game we have on steam is called fantasy land came out the 21st it's from a developer uh that has about three other games on steam it looks like a top-down RPG is let's see fantasy land is one of the four ancient Chinese masterpieces dream of the red chamber uh, there's always a lot of push on covering the I assume this is the same uh, four great Chinese novels uh, let's see single player it's only in english it does it's not even in chinese it's 40 percent off for five dollars and 39 cents and there's no reviews on it here's what i would say is that it looks like there's probably it, it's hard it, in this to say that these are asset flip like health bars and meters because they could just be really poorly animated from scratch health bars and meters so instead of calling everything asset flips i probably should just say this is a poorly animated hud and every screenshot that i'm seeing looks very very similar uh, to the point where i don't think there's more than one screen uh, maybe it's supposed to be kind of like a moba where there's lanes regardless of what it is there's certainly nothing in fantasy land that would uh catch my attention there is also a factor to consider uh when naming a game fantasy land that's a very very generic name so let's move on uh, PC Gamer has an article, Battle Royale game Darwin Project is now free to play. In-game loot for anyone that paid for it already. So, if you were playing Darwin Project, you're probably not super happy uh, with that change. Although, it doesn't seem like the Steam reviews agree with my assessment says 84 percent of the 5200 users and uh to 5216 users uh, are positive user reviews um so i guess people were willing to overlook the fact that that now this game is probably going to have in-game loot boxes or maybe it's not maybe that's the deal as they changed it but they didn't change it for the worse they instead changed it for the better by making it free to play hmm. Hmm. the darwin project is made by scavenger studio it's the first game that they have on steam but it looks really good like this looks like a double a triple a production they've got no less than four things they say they're rated by the esp for t for teen i kind of believe it 
uh, it seems like you're you're living on this half desolate world half invaded by futuristic races world it's got a kind of team fortress 2 animation style to it as an all-time peak of today for 8916 players but it's multiplayer only free to play early access so they're saying it's like rust according to that like the biggest negative reviews with the steam chart is right here so when i click that hmm and let's see what the complaints are and i'm sure it's they went free to play like so not recommended went free to play about a week after i bought it along with the fact that you cannot return it no matter how many hours you've played because all the content has been open pretty shady business practice if you ask me pretty butthurt about this interesting twist on that so if you buy the game and then it goes free to play apparently you can't get a refund hmm. The next not recommended is I bought this game for $15 and it became free. They stole my $15. So we pay for your game and then you release it for free. Great. Now we get a salty community. Yay. Pay $15 for a game. Game goes free within days with no warning. No refund. Congratulations. You just effed me and everyone out of their money. I don't want to spend $15 on a, on a cosmetics in a free to play game so it's not loot boxes which i guess would be a good thing if it weren't for the fact that that everybody now feels like they've been ripped off and i think they have a valid argument that they have been ripped off like i'm not gonna get anywhere here i probably should just concede hmm uh, here's a negative review. Crafting and stamina for running and actions. Boring. Avoid. Uh, here's, here's one. Overall, a well-made game. However, when you play a game and the director has decided to make one person win, that's the end of that fun. So, apparently there's some kind of scripting director in it. Adding events. And he, one of their videos has a streamer playing Darwin Project. Yeah, this feels like a full bait and switch. So I can't recommend playing Darwin Project even at free to play status. When half of the audience has now felt like they've been ripped off. Like, doesn't even mean, matter if it's true or not. If half of your audience feels like they've been ripped off playing this game, they're they're like the like the person said they're gonna be salty next game we have is called bane of asphodel a s p h o d e l let's see it's from the bane of asphodel team so i imagine it's the only game on steam it is however it came out the 21st it's rated very positive 74 percent of 31 user reviews uh, not very positive mostly positive and it's free so like what could i really say against a free game i could say that there is what looks like asset flips somewhat in this it has a flat short people kind of toy like uh figures running around very big buildings that aren't at the same scale and the people don't have a lot of details uh, in what they're being animated as hmm. and it seems like it's it's a free-to-play action-adventure indie game it says 
seems like you run around fields and you fight animals and the animals have maybe a little bit more of a fight mechanic i mean it, it kind of almost looks like it's a a dark souls-esque attempt to rip off dark souls while having the animation style of adventure time um, maybe it's not the animation style of adventure time it's poor quality animation is, is the problem like the three this game smacks of being a 3D animation experiment that failed. Let's see. The 8 negative is... Like... Uh, here's the first not recommended. It felt like a group of devs, or devs just took acid and started going balls to the wall with randomly developed game. And this is what came out. I'm so confused yet fascinated by the game. Needs much improvement. Yeah, that's a great argument I think I can agree with if I play this and then do this and then do this and then do this and kill this and then the turn uh, the next not recommended can't even play this BS game. The the mouse won't stay in the game and it goes to other screens and everything. Can't skip dialogue either. Doesn't even have a tutorial. A quick instruction tells me to kill cats. Doesn't tell me what button or anything to use. So I'm just button smashing trying to figure out which key to click. Plus it's boring. Alright, so I think we've heard enough reviews for Bane of asked for that, which is weird. Like, this feels like it was a half finished project or less than half finished project. Like, I could have seen this coming out on cell phones or it's the Switch, uh, but instead, it just has no polish on it at all. Uh, which I imagine is one of the things that can happen a lot is you'll run into people that figure they can make a game simply by doing the bare minimum like getting out of the alpha stage and and skipping over the beta stage completely uh, Next game we have on Steam is called Deer Hunter X. Now, there was a series on PC for deer hunting that was really built around trying to, at the time, best represent deer hunting um, as a patience sport, as, uh, as something that takes a whole day and there's a decent chance you still won't even see a deer let alone shoot one uh, that being said that's not what this is this game is a complete asset flip you're running around in military uh well camo uh which is not that crazy but you're shooting an ak-47 if i'm not mistaken a fully automatic gun you you've you're like snipering uh, the deer According to some of these screenshots, uh, one of the in the video, one of the uh, the images uh, has has you shooting like the guy shooting the deer several several times, and it's still not falling over. Hey, we made it up to rank twenty two. Maybe we'll make it to rank twenty by the end of the month, after all. At the very least, we should get our our border, our card back. Let's see. Uh, so Deer Hunter X here's a a useful, uh, not recommended quote. Applying for a weapon license is more fun and rewarding. Uh, and I, I agreed with that. Like, if you're really into hunting, 
uh, you probably would want to just go actually hunt or at the very least you'd want something that's realistic but i don't feel like those games ever really had much of a market so they, they were always these eh, you'd see this on the corner of a of a store a general store uh or in the in the bargain bin of the computer electronics section like nobody people the stores would buy these games thinking they would sell but the games would never sell like personally i've never really had any interest in hunting or fishing and yet uh there's was quite a lot of hunting and fishing games out there which i'm sure half of the advertisers who were advertising games in the 90s were also advertising hunting and fishing equipment uh, next game we have is called Crucible Falls to Together Forever. It is the first game from this developer. $4.99. What is this though? It says Adventure Horror Survival Horror Puzzle Dark. Hmm. Crucible Falls could be like a Silent Hill type thing. Hmm. I'm watching the trailer trying to see if this is a poor quality game or if it's just kind of a teasing trailer. Seems like the animation probably is low quality that you want. You're looking at something that's probably close to a PS2 level 3D graphics. Uh, but you mostly are in the first person perspective. And so it, it's a little bit better than that from most of the game. It's just when I saw the 3D model in the mirror. Hmm. Puzzles don't look uh, cliched. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if you could really do a game like Mist and have it be more focused around horror. Because I suppose there was a tiny bit of horror in playing missed one because you just wouldn't really even know what the game was about uh, but not a lot hmm this certainly seems ambitious I guess certainly seems like it's an ambitious sort of it's, it's an all time peak of seven people have played it I'm seeing the problem with this game, however. It's a two-player co-op horror escape game separated in different parts of an abandoned sanitation station. You and your partner will need to use your communication and wits to help each other out. So I couldn't ever play this game because of that. And that's, that's a real problem. It also suffers from dark screenshot syndrome where a significant number of the screenshots are done in incredibly dark setups. Like maybe I need to adjust my secondary monitor to be brighter. But I mean, no, I, I had already professionally calibrated my TV that I'm looking at, so that that's not le legitimate. Let's see. Let's look at the negative reviews. Hmm. Uh, neg not recommended. This game seems to use a two-hour time limit to make it so that you finish the game right around when you wouldn't be able to return it. Uh, well, I fair enough. I imagine a lot of games work ar around that idea. Hmm. 
Like, played it for about an hour, the game has multiple bugs, so much shoddy controls, the voice chat in-game was so low that it had to use a third-party app in order to talk to each other. At one point, an ear-piercing screech from someone on fire shrieks in one player's ear, trying to be horror, but more just a way to damage your eardrums. I like the fact that they're trying to do a horror game, we were there type game. Uh, we were there. Hmm. I have to look that one up because I don't remember we were there. We were there is a manga. Okay. It might also be a TV series. Seems to be a manga more than anything. Well, according to this, we were there. It's a Japanese romance manga. Chronicles the relationship between two characters starting from their teenage years and continuing into their early uh, 20s. I don't think they meant we were there. Uh, is this YouTube, uh, Google, translating this? Hmm. There's a 2011 IMDb movie. No, I don't think that's what they meant either. Okay. I don't know what he meant by we were there. I think he means the the new game that just came out. Uh, but I don't remember the name of that game. The new co-op game that came out for Sony. Hmm. Hmm. Doesn't start with the Wii. It starts with um, It was sa same as we were here, apparently. So not we were there, but we were here is the next review, okay? Hmm. So let's search this game, we were here, on Steam, since Crucible Falls. It's not it. Well, we were here it is on my wish list. And it is multiplayer, so why is it on my wish list? No, it can't be on my wish list. I'm not even logged in on Steam. So I think I think they're right. Like if you if you were gonna play uh, Crucible Falls play we were here on steam which is 91 percent of 253 user reviews positive um, now that's a, that's a weird thing to say because you don't inherently want there to be only one game of a style uh, in existence like it, it's it's kind of a silly thought to say there can't be any other uh, any other games that are like this game but that did look Crucible Falls did look too too buggy moving on PC Gamer has an article Tim Schafer talks Psychonauts 2 and more remasters of LucasArts Adventures I think I mostly heard what he has to say uh, and this is just PC Gamer pushing an article I've already read like Tim Schafer 
Uh, let's see. Uh, here's a question. Can you talk about how Psychonauts 2 is coming along? He goes, yeah, we have about five level teams cranking away on the mental world. In Psychonauts, you go for the minds of people to see their inner uh, demons and fight the nightmares. We have multiple teams working on new levels for that, and we just did an update about the the level teams and how they the level teams and how they work. I'm almost done writing the cutscenes for the game, and we just started looking at casting for the voices. So, I suppose take it for what it's worth that Tim Schafer's inherently the writer of. Uh, of Psychonauts 2. It's very possible he was the writer for Psychonauts 1, however, so he may do a really good job, he may not. I would say when you look at Broken Age and the writing that happened there, there's a decent chance that he, it won't be good writing, which could be a problem. Um, creating more levels certainly is an important thing. Um, and as far as LucasArts games, if Disney wants wants Double Fine to remake old LucasArts games like the Indiana Jones games would be a great one since we know in a couple of years there's going to be Indiana Jones 5 uh, according to Steven Spielberg and that's what's on the slate so it probably will actually happen that would be a good idea remastering some of the other games that don't matter so much like the dig or loom things that are classic um, Although some of those games also probably would be better suited to be remade completely and not just remastered. Um, Double Fine does do a decent job of remaking the old LucasArts games for as best as they can. But they, they've never really done a remake. And I would still like to give a little bit more money to Double Fine so that they at some point could do something with Full Throttle. And if they would just do the right thing with Full Throttle and, and remake it and make it an action RPG, that would be really nice. So, but you can read the rest of that article if you're interested. Next game we have on Steam is called Absolute Blue. It looks all right in the animation, but it is one of these side-scrolling uh, shooters. I mean... It's the old school shooter. I, I wouldn't really classify it as a bullet hell shooter. Uh, although it may get down to that point. It, it's kind of hard to, to find what the definition of a bullet hell shooter is versus a regular shooter. Uh, I would think there needs to be probably a mechanic. Uh, because yeah, I, I would classify this as probably getting to the point of a bullet hell shooter. But it also looks like a student project in that some of the... There's, there's some big inconsistency on the quality of the animated elements. Like maybe these are asset flips and that's the inconsistency. Just low quality in general. And the thing that's going to really kill it is it's 15% off for $3.39 for something that I probably would have only paid a dollar for in the first place if it was really good. Uh, the developer has like his website and twitter hyperlinked in the description uh in the first paragraph it's like please contact me through twitter and my website and forums uh the game says it has 60 sections 20, 12 low levels for huge worlds so it's claiming to be big at least let's see we already talked about valve buying campo santo i'm Cautiously optimistic, I suppose, is the best I could say. Hmm. Where well, I talked about how it is the culture, apparently. Uh, here's the exact uh, quote from somebody who I assume works at Valve. Um, I assume. Um, or has some experience. And, and they say, I like the directness. Quote, walk out of a meeting or drop off a call as soon as it's obvious you aren't adding value. It's not rude to leave, it's rude to make someone stay and waste their time. I'm sorry, that is exactly what meetings are. Like, 
regardless. And the problem there, uh, the problem is that you're giving control to employees whether they even hear the corporate message and direction, uh, whether people are on the same page or not. I rail against groupthink a lot, but in a corporate environment, people have to be on the same page. There has to be at least a certain level of understanding and knowing what people are doing. Uh, otherwise, you're not literally, by definition, working with the people. Hmm. Apparently, this person goes on to to talk about, there's a whole Twitter thing that says, like, on meetings, excessive meetings are the blight of big companies and almost always get worse over time. Please get, get of all, it's probably supposed to be, please get rid of all large meetings unless you're certain you're providing value to the whole audience, in which case, them, keep them very short. And then on jargon, don't use acronyms and nonsense words for objects, software, and processes. A lot of jar jargon I've run into. Uh, some of it makes sense, but a lot of it also is just a lot of stuff that needs to be explained to anybody new or who isn't on the same page. Right. Most of my experience comes from the IT department, so when you run into jargon like a NAS box is network attached storage. It it makes sense because it's saving some text, but uh, but even in the video games uh, realm, if you're talking like what's your APM, I'm sure a lot of people who play video games don't know that APM is your actions per minute or CPM clicks per minute. Uh, but we, we don't have too much video game jargon once you get into video games. We probably have a decent amount of it if you've never, ever played a game in your life. Next game we have on Steam is called Orccraft. came out the 21st. And it's an asset flip. It's a little bit interesting. It's your standard, we took some assets of zombies and they're going to attack somebody, but instead of attacking a human asset flip, this is a uh, um, you're, you're playing as an orc character. And this game has ads in it for the Galaxy S9. Have they figured out a way to put ads into games on the asset flip level? That's going to be awful. Like, a bunch of uh, this developer claims to be just an indie developer. This is a free-to-play game. All-time peak of seven. Single player. Uh, here we go. Let's do this. And then do this. And then do this. And then the turn. We have a negative, not recommended review. It's free, so I can't criticize it too hard, but it, it just didn't have that much fun playing it. The game also seems to be a bit buggy with the controls of menu, and it couldn't be. Uh, uh, and could be tuned up quite a bit. The description you give says fun game to play when bored, but I quickly bored of the game. However, who knows, someone else might like it. Uh, next not recommended view is not even worth the download, and I would agree with that, too. This is, I mean, it's just an asset flip. The concept is kind of interesting. If it weren't created from the idea, oh, oh my goodness, you get your health and your energy back by looking at the ads. This, this game, this asset flip game, has just found the new BS that people will be mad about in video games. So your health and mana probably constantly drain, or designed to be constantly drained, 
and you only get it back by looking at billboards with ads on them oh my goodness this is this is the dark grim future of video games uh yeah but the idea of an orc fighting zombies not a terrible thought it's it's actually a rather interesting thought particularly if you were gonna let like the world of warcraft developers anywhere near it uh, but this is certainly the worst implementation of this ever let's just move on we've got a ton of games next game we have is mini golf arena hmm. now is this a good game or is this just a bunch of asset flips i've i know that there's quite a few mini golf games out there uh, this, this one doesn't look good it doesn't even look like it's animating the balls instead of the the balls looking like balls they're looking like snakes hmm. it says a single player and multiplayer early access 10% off for eight dollars and nine cents silence this guy Probably should hold on to my silences for the, that character all the time. Hmm. So we have a not recommended uh, review. We have another not recommended review. Hmm. Have another not recommended review. Here's one. It starts avoid at all costs. It's just a worse golf in another store bought mini ga golf game. No love or passion involved in making the game. Just another cash grab with the main mini golf genre craze. Store bought assets, no assets match. Physics are way off and super floaty. UI is terrible. Game uh, lags. Super bad for nothing in it. Server couldn't, doesn't work half the time. Couldn't be bothered to make an editor, so you have to use Unity and make the game yourself, basically. Interesting. Yep, that's what I figured we were going to have. How... Seriously, still looking for that one victory. I am still looking for a good mini golf game, and I've seen a couple of them, but I'd like something that's really, really great. And I've yet to see that. Keep on closing. Hmm. A lot of my tabs are turning out to be the exact same thing, just open to, over and over again. And my memory is so shot when going down Twitter that, like, I will just click the same, same article. But also, that is very much from the fact that you have pc gamer putting out two copies of the same article you have your gamer putting out a slightly different version of the same article you've got uh you've got several other people uh that i follow on twitter putting out the same article so i get there the article seven different times however that doesn't account for the fact that a lot of the times i open up the exact same what's on steam twist uh uh, what's on steam links uh, some of that i imagine can be attributed to the way twitter works though as, as being non-linear right we do this we do this we do this, we do this, 
to do this. And we do that. Uh, Assassin's... Let's see. What is this? PC Gamer has an article. Assassin's Creed Origins control panel that lets you hack the game is out now. A free PC-only Assassin's Creed Origin update has been added to the... Uh, has added the Animus control panel designed to let you hack the game by fiddling around with 70 different sliders. You can now run four times the normal speed, hit twice as hard, tame more animals at any one time, uh, creating an army of hippos and destroying anyone in your warpath. Hmm. So this seems like this is a good opportunity for uh, Assassin's Creed Origins to get a lot of feedback, I imagine, uh, from... Like, like, what would people prefer to have been different on their many, many different sliders? I imagine this control panel was similar to some internal cheat panel that they were using while they were doing uh, quality assurance. Uh, since they changed Assassin's Creed basically uh, quite a lot, making it a a RPG loot based game the idea of certain statistics changing gives them an idea of what do, do people want in their next iteration of Assassin's Creed since this is arguably the beginning of a whole new generation of Assassin's Creed games hmm. I suppose I could have hit this one then done Shadow Step and then played it again. Like the trailer for this control panel is mostly just a guy talking. Hmm. Like I, I haven't really heard anybody say anything about Assassin's Creed Origins being too hard or too easy so I imagine it just scales rather nicely. Let's see. Your magic shall not Here we go. So watch if I do this and then do this and then do this. Hmm. PC Gamer has an article, the Resident Evil 4 HD project mod remakes the island and prepares for something big. Um, plus an impressive haul of the behind the scenes improvements. Uh, PC Gamer and me have been keeping an eye on this uh, Resident Evil 4 HD project. Uh, at any point, I still feel like Capcom could just step in and do the wrong thing and DMCA it or do the right thing and uh, hire these people and just buy all the content uh, and release a better version of Resident Evil 4 that runs better and looks better. Uh, I don't know if there's really too many areas after the island because I was pretty certain the island was the last bit that they had to do uh, there's still really a question about the engine and like how well will the engine run with these new graphics even if it does look good uh, it's kind of arguable that the graphics even in HD are only getting a slight upgrade and by the time this HD project is done that there needs to be a new render to 4k uh, let's see let's see hmm. Hmm. yeah I'm looking at this trailer comparing the two graphics and while the HD graphics do look better 
The game still looks dated. Really, really dated. Hmm. 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 So, my I guess a big thing to take from this article is the big announcement. If the big announcement is that the Capcom is going to work with them, there is going to be a Resident Evil 4 HD experience. Uh re-release update whatever ideally i'd like it for free because right now on my copy of resident evil 4 on steam is not running right and i find that very unacceptable and really 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 want to play that game without it lagging hmm. we've got another game on steam called monster rpg 3 that's pretty much all you need to know with such a un unique name it Looks like it's an 8-bit style, NES style game. Let's see. 10% off for $3.59. Nobody's reviewed it. Uh, I imagine there's been a Monster Hunter 1 and 2 before. It just... The problem with this is... Why would you want to play something that looks like an NES classic RPG when you could go back and play the original, like the real thing? So, yeah, I'm looking at this developer. They made Monster RPG 1 as a bit of DLC for free. And then they've made a game called Crystal Picnic, which is neutral review. The game called Monster RPG 2, which is neutral like nothing is getting a thumbs up it's just mixed reviews and i could certainly see a reason for that hmm. speaking of seeing reasons for things uh, the next game is bishi and the alien slime invasion and it looks like you must paint graphics let's see hmm like one suspicious positive recommendation that's it two dollars and 99 cents no discount like this ms paint level game it's the first game from this developer i don't know why you put a game like this on steam this is a kind of game that might work on itch.io but you just don't spend that hundred dollars. Are people making a hundred dollars on itch.io and then spending all of that money to do Steam Direct? Like, it's very possible that somebody out there has done something like that. They've wasted their precious hundred dollars. And I can certainly see that from a YouTube content creator perspective, too. Like, I've been paid. I believe a hundred dollars maybe a few pennies more than that from YouTube back when YouTube was monetizing small youtubers channels and unlike now uh, I could see somebody getting paid their first hundred dollars from YouTube and wasting it uh, on advertising with YouTube or advertising in some other way to try and grow their channel just fully reinvesting all that money uh, which isn't crazy it it's certainly what i've heard from people running businesses is be prepared to make absolutely no money and invest every bit of profit into your company for the first two to four years so it's not insane but it you it is insane when you're talking such small numbers as uh as a hundred dollars like you should be you should be talking in the tens of thousands if not uh hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're trying to run a business depending on how big the business is hmm. and i guess that's kind of pointless speculation but i wonder hmm. curation 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 we just get back to that over and over again we need 
fluoration of some small infantin really really small amount of curation on steam more than what we're seeing somebody needs to be in charge of looking at our all rpg games speaking of rpg games next game we have is called infinite survival the first game on steam by this developer 15 percent off for five dollars and nine cents see and i may just have it all wrong that that would be something that would probably give me a heart attack from the shock of it if somebody showed me some numbers that said no all these cheap rpg maker games that come on steam actually do make money and this is actually a profitable business model and totally worth doing and the right thing to do uh this game that i'm looking at right now looks like a half minecraft half rpg out thing maybe it's minecraft maybe it isn't it seems like it might be it has some survival elements certainly as a one time a peak all time of one person playing it it does not look good at all so let's just move on next game we have is called dictator's dreams let's see this is from somebody who makes a bunch of fake game joke games uh meme games uh why has this person been allowed to post games that are i seems like as early as november 1st 2017 this this developer has been able to paste post fake games and sell them for 67 cents hmm. oh darn it i screwed up hmm Well, I guess I don't really have any anything to say here. I mean, this game is a fake game. Dictator's Dreams, fake game. Probably could have told that from the name. If not, you could certainly have told it from the animation. Next game we have is called Keplerth. K-E-P-L-E-R-T-H. It looks like it is... What does it say? Early Access RPG Sandbox Game. Hmm. Darn it, counter spell. Yeah, this looks like a top down Terraria game. Clone. Okay. I can see that. It's 15% off for $11.04. That's way too expensive. The first game that's recommended is Terraria, which is $9.99, or Starbound which is fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents uh so there's two better versions of this type of game already hmm. so what would convince me to play clip earth versus terraria it's the first game from this developer on steam it seems or the only game on steam right now i guess who knows Let's go ahead and play this in the turn yeah I can't justify anybody buying clip earth let's move on uh, Gamma Sutra has an article terminal reality is suing Microsoft over shadow and lightning patents so the blood rain developer which I would argue is probably suffering for money because I don't believe they've made anything in a very long time uh, is it's the exclusive license 
of the infernal technology is suing Microsoft for infringing on their patents for its lighting and shading technologies. Now, what's interesting here is this for lighting and shading technologies that Microsoft put into DirectX, say, 11 or 12, or is this for something that was used? While well, primarily known as a developer, Terminal also created a variety of game engines, including the Infernal Engine, that's the heart of this case, according to the complaint as spotted by Patent Arcade. Terminal believes a number of Microsoft titles and engines used to create them have infringed on Infernal uh, Engine tech, tech patents. And see, this is one of those examples of where patents shouldn't be granted to software ever. Uh, it should be only be granted to methods to build and create something physical because when you're talking about moving bits around uh, a patent is is ridiculous and impossible to prove and just floods the the courts with lawsuits and keeps the n new innovation from happening uh, but I could get into probably a big rant on that and and probably misspeak on a few things because I'm certainly not an expert in patent law. But personally, I, I I would argue also that maybe copyright shouldn't exist for for a lot of things or that they should be really shorter. The list of infringing titles includes big names and recent release, releases like Halo 5, Gears of War 4, Sea of Thieves, and Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Although it's currently at loggerheads with Microsoft, Terminal hasn't been active in the world of game development since reportedly shutting down its Texas studio back in 2013. So I imagine this may not even be the same people. It could be that Terminal Reality did shut down in 2013. Their creditors and debtors have taken complete control of the company and now they're trying to sue Microsoft to get some money out of it. This will be the last game for this recording. Uh, good, good Old Games is getting more Steam-like with the addition of new social features, according to Game of Sutra. We knew that they were going to add uh, profiles and social features uh, to their website. So they're starting to do that. So Good Old Games has introduced a batch of new social features to, to its website to let players view and share their own libraries and games activity with friends and other folks, similar to some of the social features already in the standalone Good Old Galaxy, Good Old Games Galaxy application. I guess perhaps the their application has proven to not be as successful as they would have liked. Like, hmm. So I guess the let's see, here's a quote. It's like by default, one of the commentators on this on this thing says, by default, they have you publicly searchable plus your games. Why on earth in 2018 would good old games think that we want less privacy is beyond me, but there you go. So you have to go set yourself to private or only me or friends, um, which some of those seem like they would be the same thing. Uh, inherently introducing any any element that is social you you kind of have to force everybody to be public by default otherwise nobody is going to spend the time to to go through to find the privacy settings and make themselves public i mean you could certainly do a nag screen next time they log in uh since I'll never use good old games, even though I have one or two games on that, since I'm Steam forever, uh, since I have hundreds and hundreds of games on Steam, 
I'll have to ask the audience to let me know if they like the new good old games social features or not. To be fair, the social features in uh, the social features in Valve are not used very often in, in Steam. Like very few people friend you because you have a limited number of friends. Uh, very few people try to talk to me because I'm always marked as busy because I'm always busy recording or doing something else or just not playing on my computer so so I've, I've never really wanted that I think you probably still would want to go with something like Twitter or even Facebook or you know some kind of service like that uh, over trying to talk to your friends specifically just your gaming friends like why not go to discord well we're not making progress so in between this recording and the next recording i'm going to move over to the european account uh that's going to be it for this recording as always i ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box. If you want to support me even further, gift me a game on Steam. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.